everyone, it's Nicole here, the Harmonious Hippie. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is going to be a bit of a vigorous vinyasa flow. Um, so it's gonna be about an hour long and uh, we will be getting a little sweaty. So bring a towel if you'd like that, um, maybe some water. And otherwise the only props that you will need is um, maybe a blanket to put under your knees. Um, and blocks if you would typically use them, but otherwise you don't need anything. So just bring yourself and let's get started. Okay, everyone, so just getting started in a comfortable seated position, cross-legged. You can come to sit on a block or a pillow just to elevate the hips a little bit if you would like. Just rolling the shoulders up and back, closing down the eyes, growing tall from the crown of the head. Palms could be face down for grounding or face up for receiving. I'm just coming to your breath here. Tuning into your practice for today. Becoming very present in this moment, in this space that you're in. Just noticing what kind of light you can see behind your closed eyelids. So you can hear the sound of a fountain or a fan. Maybe you can hear your family off in the distance in the house. I'm noticing if you can smell a candle or maybe you've burned some sage or palo santo. Perhaps you can smell dinner cooking. And noticing feeling of the air on your skin. Perhaps you have a fan or a heater blowing on you. And just feeling the weight of the body pressing down. <laughs> Hearing the sound of Heidi screaming. <laughs> She's amped up right now. Just observing that, letting it go. Just feeling the weight of the hands on the knees. really present in the exact place that you are right now. Mm. <laughs> I apologize, she's a bit crazy, she's just eaten. Good practice for meditation. Not letting it distract you, but instead coming back to your breath time and again. Taking a quick scan down through the body, just observing where you are at physically today, starting at the top of the head, and just scanning down. Scanning from the top of the head down through the body, not pausing anywhere for too long, but just observing any sensation that you feel, perhaps tingling, tightness, tension. Noticing if you have any feelings of heaviness or lightness in the body. Just scanning down. And coming to the end of that scan, just coming back to your breath. Observing it flowing in and out through the nose. closed if you'd like. Just starting to make some circles around with your upper body. This can be as big or as small as you'd like. Just inhaling the chest forward and exhaling back. And you can start to make these movements bigger, perhaps bringing your neck into it. Just seeing what feels comfortable. Starting to get the hips moving a little. Following with your breath. If you're up on a block or something particularly high, you might want to come down for this. And then just switching sides, rotating in the other direction. circles and coming back 
to center. We're gonna drop the right ear to the right shoulder, feeling that stretch along the neck, making sure that the shoulders are relaxed down. And then slowly begin to roll the head around into the left shoulder. Pausing here for a moment, making sure the shoulders stay relaxed down. And then slowly rolling back to the other side. Pausing. And just going through a couple more of these little half circles. Making sure that you keep the shoulders away from the ears. And that's stretching the neck. the right and left. And then rolling over onto our hands and knees to tabletop position. You can bring a blanket or a knee pad under your knees if you'd like. Making sure that the wrists are stacked under the shoulders and the knees are stacked under the hips. Coming into some cat cows here, so with your inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the tailbone high, lifting the gaze up, perhaps, if that's comfortable for the neck. And on your exhale, pressing into the hands, pulling the shoulder blades apart, squeezing the air out of the belly. Inhale, dropping the belly, lifting the gaze, filling up the belly. And exhale, squeezing that arrow, pressing into the upper back. Again, you can close down the eyes here if that's comfortable for you. Just flowing with your own breath for a few more. Completing your last exhale and coming back to a neutral spine, bringing the knees out wide, big toes to touch, and sinking the hips back, reaching the arms forward, coming into a child's pose. Forehead touches the mat. Breathing here. Pressing the hands into the ground to create some traction in the spine and pressing the hips back towards the heels. Straightening out the back. And this is a great place to come back to throughout the practice today. If you feel that you've lost your breath, you need a bit of a break, feel free to take this posture whenever you need to. No judgment, just doing what your body can do today. And beginning to come back up, you can remove any props under your knees and sinking forward onto the belly. Hands lining up under the shoulders. We're gonna to start to roll the shoulders back and using the strength of the back and not the hands to pull yourself up, shining the chest forward, coming into your baby cobra. You can even lift the hands off the ground here, testing out that back strength and releasing. Let me do that again. Rolling the shoulders back, pulling the upper body off the ground, pressing the pelvis into the ground to protect the lower back, and exhaling down, and pressing into the hands and coming through tabletop. We are going to curl the toes under and lift the hips up high, coming into downward facing dog, pedaling out the feet here, pressing into all of the fingers, all of the knuckles, And again, you can always keep a bend in your knees for downward dog, and you do not have to have your heels on the ground. Your heels never ever have to touch the ground in downward dog. So if they can't, that doesn't mean you're not doing a downward dog. You can have knees heavily bent here, just making sure that you've got slight engagement in the core. 
and you're pressing into the fingers. Breathing here. Inhale, gazing up at the thumbs and taking as many steps as you need to come to the top of your mat. You can bend the knees heavily here, folding down. Checking in with the feet in your forward fold to see if all of your weight is in your heels, trying to sink forward to bring some of that weight into the toes. Using your hands if you feel like you're gonna topple over, but also scooping the lower belly up can help you feel a little bit more stable here. Letting the head hang. And bending the knees slowly, slowly rolling up. Head is the last thing to come up, rolling the shoulders at the top. Coming into our Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Palms down at the sides, tucking the tailbone, making sure that you're engaging the core slightly. Chest is nice and open, growing tall through the crown of the head, lifting up all 10 toes, and slowly placing those back down. Feeling strong and sturdy here. And inhaling, sweeping the arms up overhead, coming into pistol grip here. Again, making sure you're not winging out at the chest, tucking the tailbone. And inhale as if you're going up and over a beach ball, coming to one side. Weight is equal in the feet. Inhaling back up to center and up and over to the other side. And back up to center, releasing the arms down. You can widen your stance slightly, and we're just gonna sway here. So let your arms hang, let the hands tap the body, lifting your back foot as if you're doing a golf swing here, just shaking that out, wiggling out. And slowly, back to stillness. Starting at the top of the mat, we're going to come down into a low lunge. So stepping back with your right foot, again you can grab something for under your knee if you'd like. Dropping that knee down, untucking the toes, and coming up into your low lunge, making sure that your knee stays aligned over your ankle joints at all times. Feeling into that right hip flexor, but ensuring that your hips stay even. So that's pulling the right hip forward while pressing the left hip back, sinking in there, inhaling the arms up overhead. Again, checking in with your rib cage here, engaging the core slightly, making sure that you're not hinging out of the rib cage. And exhale, placing the hands down under the shoulders, starting to lean back, pointing the left toes at the sky. Stretching into that hamstring, Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. And then inhaling forward, sweeping the arms up, low lunge, engaging the core. Exhale, the hands come under the shoulders, leaning back, flexing into that front foot, half split. Inhaling forward once more, sweeping the arms up, tucking that tailbone slightly, low lunge, and then exhaling to come back into your half split. If you have a full split in your practice here, you can start to slide that front leg out. If you don't come all the way down and you'd like to still try the split, you can bring blocks on either sides of your hands. Breathing here, flexing the toes up at the sky. And rolling over to your bum cheek here. We are going to switch legs. So bringing that right foot forward and then dropping that left knee down to the ground. We're going to line our knee up with our ankle joint, sweeping the arms up. Again, 
feeling into that left hip joint, but ensuring that the hips are kept even. Engaging the core slightly, trying to tuck the tailbone here. And exhale, placing hands under the shoulders, leaning back, flexing into that right toe, half split. Inhale forward, sweeping the arms up, Anjanyasana, low lunge. Exhaling back into your half split, thinking of chin to shin here, instead of just curling down. Feeling that stretch in the hamstring. Inhaling forward, last time. Reaching up, checking in with the ribs, checking in with the hips. And exhaling, hands come back to the ground, half split. Again, if you have a full split in your practice and you would like to try that, just coming forward, making sure that you do attempt to do equal on both sides. I know my, my right side is not quite as deep as my left, so always trying to even those out and bring balance to the body. Breathing in and out through the nose. And then rolling over onto your butt cheek. And coming back into a tabletop position. We'll press up into a downward facing dog. Ignoring my cat, destroying my couch. <laughs> Inhaling, gazing at the thumbs and stepping or hopping to the front of your mat and slowly rolling back up, rolling the shoulders up and back. Coming into a couple of sun salutations here. So standing in your strong mountain pose at the top of your mat, hands at heart center, engaging the core. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead, palms come to touch. Exhale. Dropping down into your forward fold. Knees can be bent here. Inhale, halfway lift. Again, that was my cat. Exhale, fold. Thank goodness we're not doing restorative today, hey? Stepping back into your high plank. You can take a full chaturanga here or drop the knees and come through knees, chest, chin, keeping the elbows glued to the sides. Inhale into your baby cobra or your upward facing dog. And exhale into your downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Inhale, gazing up at the thumbs. And stepping or hopping to the front of your mat. Holding down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Taking a bend in the knees and inhaling, sweeping the arms up overhead. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's repeat that again. Inhale, sweeping the arms up overhead. Exhale, folding down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding down, planting the hands and stepping back to your high plank. Dropping the knees or taking a chaturanga here. Inhaling into your cobra or upward facing dog. And exhaling downward facing dog. Take a breath here. Inhale, gazing up at the thumbs, stepping or hopping to the front of your mat. Folding down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bending the knees, sweeping the arms up overhead, palms come to touch. And exhale, hands come to heart center. Dropping the hands down by the sides, palms face forward. Coming into our strong, sturdy mountain pose again, tucking the tailbone, engaging the core, catching the breath. <laughs> it is hard to talk and do sun salutations, man. Eh? <laughs> We're going to come into a balance pose now. So rooting into your right foot, starting to move your weight into that right foot, not sinking into the hip, just leaning over and perhaps your left foot comes off the ground. You can bring the toes to the ground, 
heel to your ankle. If you'd like, you can slide up onto the calf. And if you'd like to come deeper, please make sure that you avoid the knee. You can bring that heel straight up, little movements so you don't fall over. And again, looking at a point that's not moving, so not looking at me, rooting down to that right foot, pressing with the heel into the leg and the leg into the heel. Hands can come to heart center. You can open your branches if you feel sturdy. Making sure you take little corrections. Tiny little movements will keep you in the pose. The shadows from my fan are not helping me stay today. <laughs> and coming out, releasing that knee up, hand dropping that foot down, giving that a wiggle. Oh boy, every day is different. You will definitely notice this if you practice balancing postures often. Some days my tree pose is sturdy as a tree. <laughs> and some days she is being chopped down. So rooting into that left foot, coming around to the other side. Again, you can bring the toes to the ankle. You can draw up onto the calf. Again, avoiding the knee, you can always reach down for that foot and pull that up into the upper thigh. And you might notice a difference here as well. I find on this side, I can't bring my foot all the way up. And that's fine. I just keep it a little bit lower. And if your toes are still on the ground, no worries there, you're still a tree. You just have wider roots. Releasing your branches. Breathing. And coming out, lifting that knee up. And placing that down, give that a little, a little wiggle. We're going to come to the top of the mat again. And we're going to step back with the right leg, coming into a high lunge. So popping that back toe off, bending into the front knee, ensuring that the knee stays over the ankle joint. And this can also be used as an alternative to warrior one. In warrior one, you would have the back foot planted at a 45 degree angle, but depending on your anatomy, this can be quite hard with keeping the hips rotated forward. So always feel free to do a high lunge here. Raising the arms up into the sky, keeping the rib cage tucked in, tucking that tailbone, engaging the core. And with your exhale, you're gonna drop that back heel to parallel to the edge of the mat, opening the arms to the sides into your warrior two. So your toes in the front on your left leg are still facing forward. The back foot is parallel to that back edge of your mat and you're bending into that front knee, checking down with the knee, making sure it's tracking towards the pinky side and not coming in. So you want to be able to see your big toe. And again, tucking the tailbone, engaging the core, lifting the palms up to roll the shoulders down the back. And bending forward, placing that elbow on your, um, not shin, what is this? Quad. <laughs> you can rotate that right arm up and around. And think of energy coming from the outer edge of that right foot, coming all the way up and shooting out your fingers. Extended side angle. And straightening that front leg. You can bring your left arm onto your shin or onto a block in front of you, and then peel that top arm open. Gaze can be up at the thumb or down at the ground if that's more comfortable. Again, tightening the core, tucking the tailbone, making sure that the knees are pulling up the legs. Nice and strong here. and beginning to windmill that top arm down. We're gonna twist all the way, twisting those front toes to the side as well. So now we're facing the long edge of the mat. Inhaling up tall and exhale, folding here. If you'd like to bend the knees or come to a block, you can do that. Just letting the head hang here. 
You can start to walk the hands under the legs as if you were going to bring the crown of the head to the floor. For the 12th time, I apologize for my cat. <laughs> if you have a headstand in your practice, you can go ahead and come into your tripod headstand here. If you're just hanging, that's still an inversion, still counts. And placing the hands back under the head, inhaling halfway lift. And then we are going to rotate our right toes so that they are pointing at the edge of the mat. Rotate yourself around, popping that back heel so you're in your high lunge on the other side, coming up. Arms come up, check in with the rib cage and the hips. Tucking the tailbone, engaging the core. And then again for warrior two, rotating that back left leg so that your foot is parallel to that short edge. Stretching the arms out and bending into that front knee again. Make sure that you can see your big toe. Tucking the tailbone, flipping the palms up to roll the shoulders down the back. Bending into that knee and then placing that elbow onto the, I always want to say shin or calf, onto the quad. <laughs> Rotating that top arm up and around. If you're gazing up, tucking the chin slightly to protect the neck. Or you can look down at the ground, again feeling that energy coming from the outer edge of that left foot. Shooting up through the arm. Breathing in and out through the nose. Beginning to straighten that front leg. The hand can come onto the shin or onto a block in front of you and then peeling that front arm open, coming into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Tucking the tailbone here, pulling the knees up the legs, nice and strong. And then windmilling that arm down, turning the toes so that you're facing the long edge of the mat again. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, folding down. Inhaling back up halfway, putting the right hand directly under the face and using the left arm to twist yourself open. You can also bring that left arm to the lower back. Just having a little twist here. And then releasing that back down, placing the left hand under the face and twisting the right side open. And releasing that back out. Twisting ourselves to the front of the mat so that the left leg is down, popping that back heel and becoming very light on that back foot, stepping up to the top of the mat, forward fold, let that go. And then ragdoll slowly, slowly rolling up. That is the last thing to come up and rolling the shoulders up and back, up and back. Now there is an option here. We're going to do a little bit of crow play. Um, so if crow is in your practice, you can go ahead and starting with that. I'll just give a little demo here. Um, you can bring a block if you would like, if that makes it easier for you to get your hips up high. If you are worried about falling forward, you can place pillows. Um, blankets, anything soft in front of your face if you're worried. Um, do note if you are falling forward that you want to tuck your head so that you can just roll instead of landing on your face, but you won't fall. <laughs> so coming up to stand on your block if that's what you're using. Bending the knees here. So I like to bring my heels to touch, my toes a little bit out from each other. And then the palms come 
flat down onto the ground. You want to lift your bum up high so that you can place the knees into the backs of your armpits here. You will notice that the tricep might be moving out of the way. So I find it's easiest for me if I come more to the outside and I try to pull in and move that tricep out of my way. Alternatively, you can come out a little bit wider onto your elbows here, more like a frog kind of. And with crow pose, we always wanna be gazing forward. So think of making a triangle with your hands and your gaze. So never look between the hands or you will go forward, look ahead of you. So if you're doing this um, more lower version, that's fine. You can just bring the knees to the outsides of the elbows and start to lean forward. Gaze goes forward, perhaps one foot comes off, maybe both feet do for a second. Just seeing what that feels like. And then eventually, excuse me, I have to cough. <coughs> excuse me. Eventually, you want to start to bring your bum up high and bringing those knees in towards the armpits. Again, you can start to lean forward. Perhaps one foot comes off. Maybe both feet do. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then release back down. Just see what feels right here. Maybe only one foot comes off for today. Maybe both feet come off. Um, and maybe only for a second. But uh, the more you practice it, the more you practice that squeezing and that pulling upwards with your weight, you will notice that you can hold for a lot longer. So just taking another minute here. I'll let you guys do it. I am sweating something awful. Oh, boy, oh boy. <sighs> Once you've completed your crow play for the day, just joining me here, seated, legs out long, toes pointing up to the ceiling, Dandasana, staff pose, goodness, rolling the shoulders up and back, sitting up nice and tall, catching your breath. Bringing your right leg out to the side. I like to place my heel onto something because it's pretty bony. And then bringing your left heel in towards your upper thigh. Typically we would center ourselves over this foot and then come over a leg, but we're gonna go forward over the bent leg instead. So coming up nice and tall. And with our exhale, beginning to hinge from the hips. So instead of just immediately curving, you want to protract the chin and keep the back straight for as long as you possibly can. When you reach that edge, inhale, grow tall. And then exhale, you can fold down. If you'd like a block under your hands here, you can go ahead and grab that. Trying to make sure that both sit bones are equally pressing into the ground here. So I can feel that my right wants to lift, keeping that pressing down. Breathing here. This is our half dragonfly pose. Shamu Shashasana. And inhaling back up. We're going to open the left foot to the side, bringing the right into the upper thigh. Again, inhaling up tall and exhaling, hinging at the hip, coming forward with a flat back until you reach that wall, then inhale, grow tall, and exhale, fold. Again, you can come to a block here if that's comfortable, maybe some pillows, whatever you have available to you, making sure that that left sit bone stays grounded as well. Breathing into the stretch. back up here we're going to bring both feet together into butterfly buff pose Vatakanasana. so instead of pulling your feet in as close to you as you can try to let them come out a little bit into like a little bit of a diamond so this gets a little bit more into the hips here so holding on to the shins the ankles inhaling growing up tall and again flat back coming down as far as you can with your back flat 
Once you reach that edge, inhale, create space, grow tall, and then with your exhale, you can fold down just to wherever is comfortable. If you'd like to bring a block under your head here, you can do that. Just coming down as far as you can, as far as feels good for you today. Feeling that stretch in the hip flexors. Releasing the neck. Slowly coming back up, extending both feet forward, giving them a little shake here, and stretching the toes up, flex towards the ceiling. We're gonna grow up tall out of the hips, inhale, and with your exhale, starting to hinge at the hip, coming over with a flat back. Try to leave the hands beside the legs instead of using the legs to pull you. If you do need a little bit of leverage, you can go ahead and hold onto the shins or the feet. But try to come as far as you can without grabbing on. As far as you can with the flat back, inhale, create space. And exhale, folding down. Releasing the lower back and the neck. You can always widen your legs a little bit. If you've got a bit of a little gut like I do, <laughs> create some space for that. <laughs> Surrendering to this forward fold. Breathing in and out through the nose. Slowly, slowly rolling back up <sighs> and squeezing the right knee in, bringing the foot to the ground. We're going to come into a twist here so you can take your left arm and bring it around the outside of your right knee if you'd like. I like to just hold on with my hand. We're going to inhale up tall and exhale, twisting that right arm behind you. Tucking the chin slightly to gaze down at the shoulder, protecting the neck. Inhales create space. And exhales perhaps twist you a little bit further. Keeping light weight in the hand. If I want to lift my hand, I totally can. So trying to make sure that you're not leaning back too much. You want to be right up on the sit bones. Just using that hand to help leverage you a little bit. But you can come to the tips of the fingers, inhaling the head back to center, followed by the body, releasing that leg and bending the left leg up. Again, you can bring the right arm to the outside of the left knee, or you can just reach around, inhaling up tall and exhaling, twisting that left arm behind you, tucking the chin slightly, gaze down at the shoulder. Create space, exhaling to twist a little bit deeper, feeling that massage on your organs with the knee. Continuing to breathe. And inhaling the head back to center, followed by the body, releasing that now. We're gonna have a small ab portion here. So I've had surgery on my tailbone so I can't sit right on the floor. If you have a similar soreness in your tailbone, you can come onto a flatter pillow. You don't want anything too high up because we are going to be balancing. We're going to come into Navasana here, boat pose. Um, of course, if you can't do this at all, that's totally fine. You can do some crunches, um, anything like that. I find some days even with the, the padding that my tailbone is still a little too sore. So just see where you're at today. No judgment at all. Beginning to lean back. Keeping the knees bent up and just beginning to lift those knees up off the ground. If you can, releasing the arms, squeezing here. If you'd like to straighten the legs, you can.
squeeze, 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 and release that down. Hinging forward, wiggling that out. <clears throat> Coming back up, we're gonna do that twice more. I know, I do it with you so that you can't hate me too much. <laughs> so starting to lean back onto that tailbone, lifting up the legs, releasing the arms, continuing to breathe. <laughs> Squeezing here, making sure you're not falling down and dumping into that lower back. Keep your back straight. Squeezing that, releasing that forward. Whew. Once more, <laughs> and then we're done with the abs. Woo! So beginning to lean back onto that tailbone, lifting the legs off the floor. Releasing the arms, squeezing here, keeping that core nice and tight. Try straightening one leg and then the other, perhaps both. See if you can lift the arms up high, grow tall, grow tall, and release that down. Whew. Removing any props, we're gonna come down onto the belly here. Great job, you guys. All right, so we're gonna come into our Sphinx pose. So with Sphinx, you wanna make sure that you line the elbows up under the shoulders. And instead of just being lazy here, make sure that you're pressing the pelvis into the ground to take some of that bend out of your lower back. So that's protecting the back. Nice and open across the chest. And inhaling here and with your exhale, peeking over that right shoulder, feeling that opening in the left side of the body. Inhaling back to center and exhale, gazing over the left side. Inhaling back to center and coming all the way down here. You can extend the arms back with your palms face up. We're gonna come into locust pose, ooh. So with your inhale, similar to your cobra pose, you wanna peel the shoulders back, begin to lift the upper body, lift the hands, and then you wanna lift the feet up off the ground as well, trying to keep the feet and the legs glued together. So squeezing into your upper back, lower back, sorry. <laughs> Using the strength of the back to pull your chest up high, 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 and exhale, dropping the right ear to the mat. Releasing that, letting the heels fall open. We're gonna do that again. This time, if you'd like to come into bow pose, you can bend the knees up and you wanna reach with your palm open to come to the inside of your foot. So reaching for both feet and on your inhale, you wanna press the tops of the feet into the hands and pull your chest up off the mat, pull your legs up, squeeze, 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 or you can be in your locust pose, squeezing here, come up a little bit higher, Ugh. and then exhale, left ear to the mat, <sighs> letting the heels flow open, letting that go. And now we're gonna roll over onto our backs. We're almost done, y'all. <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> we're gonna come into our bridge pose. So planting the heels, maybe wiggling them a little bit closer so that you can almost brush them with the fingertips, palms down. We're going to inhale, pick the bum up off the ground, press into the hips. You start to roll up onto your shoulders here, squeezing the glutes, holding here. And then with your exhale, very slowly, I like to come up onto my toes. You wanna roll down every little bit of the spine. Real slow here, releasing down. Take a breath here, we're gonna do one more. Inhale, lifting the hips up high, coming up onto the shoulders, 
pressing into the bum. If you have a supported shoulder stand in your practice, you can come up into that. Be very, very mindful. If that's not something you normally practice, I would suggest practicing that in person, in a studio, just to ensure that you have someone watching you. Squeezing here, if you're in your shoulder stand, just starting to slowly come down. And in bridge, beginning to roll out your spine. Coming back down to the mat. We're gonna lift up our left leg here, crossing the left leg, ankle, ankle, <laughs> over the right knee. So that knee is open on the left. If this is enough for you, you can stay here. If you'd like, you can reach through the center of your legs and reach for your right leg. You can leave the right leg straight like this. You can bend it 90 degrees. If you like, you can reach for the outside of that shin. Whatever feels the most comfortable for you, flexing both of the toes back to protect the knees and releasing the shoulders back to the ground. Feeling that stretch in the left hip, the left glute. Pressing that left knee open. And releasing that right leg down. You can drop the left foot to the ground. Repeating that on the other side. We're going to lift up the right foot. Crossing that ankle over the knee. Again, you can stay here. You can reach through the center of your little figure four. Leg can stay straight or be bent. Flexing the toes back. Releasing the shoulders to the ground. Pressing that right knee open. Feeling that stretch in the hip. The glute, sending your breath there. And dropping that left foot back and the right. We're going to open the arms up to a T. Lifting the legs up about a 90 degree bend here. And dropping the knees over to the right side. Try and make sure that you keep the left shoulder rooted into the ground. So if you can't drop your knees as far to the side, that's fine. The shoulder is the most important part to keep down. Gaze can go towards the left thumb or you can stay gazing at the ceiling. Bringing out the spine. Twists are very good for digestion and spinal health. back up at the ceiling, followed by the knees, and then dropping the knees over to the left. Again, making sure that right shoulder stays rooted into the ground. Gaze can go towards the right thumb or up at the ceiling. Bringing out the spine. Back to the center, followed by the knees. We can stretch out long here, and then we're going to take our right foot and open it <laughs> a little wider than the mat, and then cross the left ankle over that foot, bringing the right arm to the side of the mat and reaching for the right wrist with the left fingers. So you're in a little bit of a banana here. In Yin, this is called banana asana. <laughs> So breathing into the left side of the body, feeling that rib cage open, stretching that side body out. Coming back to the center, opening that left leg wider than the mat, crossing the right ankle over it, left arm out, right arm reaches for that wrist and stretching to that left side. Feeling the right side body opening up, feeling the space in between the rib cage, breathing there. And coming back to center, 
taking any last pose that you feel you need before you come into your Shavasana. So you can windshield wiper the knees, maybe coming into your happy baby here. Just get any last wiggles out and prepare to come into a pose of stillness. If you don't feel safe taking Shavasana on your back, you can always take it on your front. You can always come into a fetal position. You can keep the knees bent if your lower back is feeling tender. Or just stretching the legs out long, letting the feet fall open, palms face up. Relaxing down. Feeling the body releasing into the floor, sinking down. Knowing that you're held by the earth. Letting the breath come back to normal, slowing down, and noticing if the mind is particularly busy right now. Just continually noticing when your mind wanders, and just bringing it back to the breath. Time again. If you need to distract yourself with a mantra, you can inhale, I am, and exhale, relaxed. I am, relaxed. Melting down. my heart be fast hope this feeling Feels like home to me. Feels like home to me. Feels like I'm all the way back where I come from. Feels like home to me. Feels like home to me. Feels like I'm all the way back where I belong. Feels like I'm all the way back where I belong.
perhaps rolling the wrists and ankles. You reach the arms up overhead, taking a long full body stretch. And slowly, in your own time, you can bring the knees up towards the chest, rolling over to one side into the fetal position. Just using the bottom arm as a pillow. Taking a breath or two here. And then slowly using your upper arm to help press you up, coming into a comfortable seated position. Bringing my hands to heart center on Jali Mudra. Where you can bring the palms flat on the chest, feeling the beating of the heart. Bowing the head slightly. Taking a moment to honor your home, your body. Thanking it for protecting you, moving you, holding you. Loka, Samasta, Sukino, Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. The light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much for joining me today. I heartily apologize for my rowdy cats. They were out of control today. Um, hopefully with it being a bit more of a heated practice, that wasn't too much of a distraction for you. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this practice. I hope you guys weren't too appalled by my singing for you. I think I might try to incorporate that a little bit more. I just feel like Shavasana is so nice with music, but I can't actually play the songs because of copyright issues with YouTube, but covers are allowed. So I figured, hey, I can sing it. And I do love to sing. So let me know if that was horrifying, if it totally brought you out of the experience, um, or if you enjoyed it, let me know if you have a song request for your Shavasana that you like to listen to when you are relaxing in that pose normally. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful day. I hope you're staying safe and healthy and um, make sure that you're reaching out to people if you need that support. I'm here for you always. My contact details for my Instagram and my email are in the comments down below or in the description box, I guess, not the comments. Uh, please like this video if you enjoyed it. Comment down below just to say hi or to ask any questions you may have. Let me know what you'd like to see next week. Um, I'm always open to that. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends, tell your wife, <laughs> tell everyone to subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. And you can always hit the bell icon to be notified every time I post. I post every Saturday and sometimes during the week if the mood strikes. So please engage, please let me know what you want to see. Um, I always love to hear from you guys. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.